What's going on? This is Big G from G Riders and welcome to another episode of Testing Rides. Today, I'm going to be testing out the 2020 GMC Acadia. Welcome to the 2020 GMC Acadia. The Acadia was first introduced for the 2008 model year as a replacement to the GMC Envoy XL or whatever that long wheelbase one was that had the seven seats. So they separated that to make it its own thing, which was very nice because it's kind of confusing having one model and having four or four or five different having four or five different specifications and things of it. So. The Acadia was introduced back in 2008. It was first redesigned for the 2017 model year, and that's when it went on the more modern platform that underpins all of, that underpins most of GM's crossovers this size. So crossovers like this, the Acadia, the Buick Enclave, the Chevy Traverse, the new Cadillac uh, XT6, and the Cadillac XT5 all shares the same platform with this GMC Acadia. And this one now, the GMC Acadia, when they reintroduced it for the like when they redesigned it for the 2017 model year, became the smallest of the of the crossovers that's on the platform. That's besides the XT5, which is more of a five-seater, more comfortable luxury SUV. So for the 2020 model year, this is now the mid-cycle refresh of this generation of the GMC Acadia. And GMC has made a lot of changes that felt like I feel like that were needed to be made, and also some that were honestly not really necessary. All right, so for the 2020 model year, since this is the mid circle refresh, the first thing that was changed is the front grill. So this 2020 GMC Acadia looks different than the previous model of the GMC Acadia, which I thought the last GMC Acadia didn't really look that good. It was okay, but it wasn't really matching the rest of the GM lineup of SUVs. So now with this, with the new full LED headlights, turn signals and daytime running lights and fog lights and now looks like the rest of the GMC, the GMC lineup so the so it looks like the new Sierra it looks like the it looks like the new terrain like it looks like everything now so I'm glad that they did that and I think it looks good but me my personal opinion too much chrome all right so now this brings us to the back of the GMC Acadia the back of the GMC Acadia got updated too so now the the tail lights used to be a little bit smaller so it used to be more this side, just this only here, but now they stretch it out a little bit to kind of make it look a little bit different. And to be honest with you, I don't think they should have, they should have left the, head, the tail lights alone. They should have just made them all LEDs instead of making it look different. Because from many different angles, I can see up the back of a lot of other SUVs here. So if we're looking at the side here, the shape, this, and if you took this away, that's a Ford Explorer. When the tail lights are on, look at it from dead on in the back, it's like a Honda Pilot. So I felt wish G GMC should have just left it alone, left it like they were fixing something that wasn't broke. They should have just left it alone. And I thought think that'd be fine. Also, they got rid of the little little mini, the little antenna thing and they replaced it with the shark fin, which is always nice. Because I was always wondering what that SUV. At this point, should no all, all these type of SUVs have like just the shark fin instead of a little antenna thing? But I'm really glad they finally did that for the 2020 model year. And also it has the feature where you can put your foot on the bumper and open up the tailgate. So the 2020 GMC Acadia starts at just under $30,000 for the base SL model. But since this is the mid-range model and has a couple features like it has the leather seats, heated seats, um, and a couple other both sound system, a couple other things on the interior, this car does cost a little bit over $40,000. And this one does have the all-wheel drive. And I think that is about, again, that's an average price for, for, for a crossover of this size. So like, I don't think that there's nothing that stands out that's different from, from the other categories of the other, the other different models of crossovers, of seven-seater crossovers that all the other companies are making. It's this one that's just right on par with everything. So it gets about the same gas mileage, it gets about, it gets about the same horsepower and torque, and it, gets about the, and it gets about average for fuel economy. So, and it's about average price. So, you know, GM is just, this is GM's like volumes. This is GM's kind of like Impala now. If you, if you want to think about it that way, like even though it's not a Chevy, it's just, it's, it's basically like an Impala. So, you know, just meeting all the standards of the class. 
All right, welcome to the walk around of the 2020 GMC Acadia. So let's go ahead and start here at the front where the GMC Acadia looks the most different. So the front of the GMC Acadia is the biggest difference between this one and the outgoing model. So they made this look like kind of their modern lineup, the modern fronts of vehicles, which I think they really needed to do because I thought the last front of the GMC, the last front of GMC Acadia didn't honestly look that good. It looked okay, but not very good. And now it has a full LED headlights tail lights and turn signals so so that's so that's really nice walk around to the side of the vehicle there's a, there's a new wheel design um th these wheels are whatever like i'm not a big fan of them but also don't hate them either so it's not that bad walking across the side everything's pretty much the same the body lines didn't change very much but if we come around to the back that's when we, we that's when the GMC Acadia changed quite a bit there too. So these taillights are now bigger, but they all it's also full LED now too. So LED it's brake lights, turn signals, and reverse lights, which is nice. Which is something that they really need to do also. But I don't like the design very much. I think it looks too much like other crossovers on the road. Like from the side here, I talked about this before. But if you get rid of that the piece that is, that's actually on the rear lid, that looks like, just like an Explorer. And straight from the back, the lights are on. Let's go ahead and remote start it. If you look at that, it looks just like a Honda Pilot. So I think they should have done something a little bit different with design there. But they should have just, they should, instead of making it look different, they should have just made it all LED from the previous model year. So, you know, but that's not that bad. That's not that big of a deal. One other thing that I've noticed that they've changed a lot is GM's um, keyless access system used to be one of the slowest in on, on the market. So now we walk up to unlock it, you hit the button and it opens, you lock it, hit the button again, it locks right away instead of waiting 10 minutes to lock. So I remember trying it out on like a 2015 Chevy Impala and it took a very long time for the car to actually lock back up. But Overall, I think the exterior update of the 2020 GMC Acadia was well worth it and well and much needed. Welcome to the interior of the 2020 GMC Acadia. When you first hop into the 2020 GMC Acadia, you notice a couple things are familiar, but there are a couple things that are different. Everything's familiar, like the kind of the fit and finish and build quality. Like it's these things are these the, the door panels are decently soft here. The dash is nice and soft. There's a nice leather wrapped steering wheel, and kind of where everything is on the steering wheel is pretty much the same. But you come over here to the middle, the center console, and it's a little bit different than it was before. So the cup holders were moved, and there's now a little spot for you to put your phone. Um, while, you, while you're running Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or wireless charging, you now have both a regular Type A USB and a Type C um, USB port up here in the front. And the big news is this new shifter thing here. So now the the GMC Acadia is now has buttons for shifters. So you pull up on the shift on on the different buttons for what you want to do. So if when you're when you're putting in drive and reverse, you pull on these up like window switches and park neutral and the low gears for shifting yourself are all buttons that you press. Which honestly I'm not a huge fan of because it's kind of a lot of buttons to push because when you're driving it and putting it in park, you have to push two different buttons to kind of get out. So you first put it in park, then you hit the push button. And I think that's kind of too much. And I feel like this would be a little bit confusing because when I first got into this vehicle and I was driving it, like I've done about 300 miles in the car now. And when I first got in, I was a little confused on what I needed to do. So not, well, not what I needed to do, but kind of you know, I would, thought I'd turn the car off or thought I'd put it in park or whatever, and I'm, it's not really that way. And, I, and that's happened a couple times now where I thought I was putting in drive and going in reverse. It's just all really confusing. So they're fixing something that wasn't broke, but I understand why they did it to save space now, because now you got this nice, nice, more spacious um, center console here. Fit a pretty, pretty nice size coffee cup. This is my 18 ounce coffee cup here. And then you got this kind of the space underneath for storing things, which is nice to have. But the they could they should have went to something else besides buttons here i think that like they could have went to a knob or something like that i think that might have been a better execution but i understand why they did it um but everything else interior is pretty nice it looks nice other only only other problem i had with this is simple fact that this car is over forty thousand dollars and this it, the passenger seat is a full manual seat so you have to slide it forwards and backwards and then use this to front to, to go up and put the back up and back. And I think that, you know, at this price point, that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, this isn't a base model, so this should be a power seat for sure. 
But for everything else, everything is pretty nice, pretty laid out, pretty nice in this car. Like, it's very comfortable. You know, like I said, I have driven 300 miles in this car. And that's one thing GM vehicles have been doing as very good as of lately is they are extremely comfortable. Lots of space. And I feel like all the space in the interior is used decently well. Like, the door panels aren't too big. And the center console is not too big. It's not really impeding. And the center console box height is perfect so you can just drive with your arm on the on the center console like that and i think jim has been doing that well for years now and you know and i'm glad they've continued to do well with that so let's take a look at the back seat see how comfortable that is welcome to the back seat of the 2020 gmc acadia when you hop in back here it's pretty spacious like so this has the captain's chairs and the captain's chairs is kind of the way to go with this one just because you know you got plenty of space and going in and out from the middle here um and you know, they recline and slide forward and backwards and all that stuff, which is always nice. But that's kind of the standard now for crossovers like this. You got yourself some nice vents up top out of like a, out of a, a Chevy Pass van, which is nice. And then you also have some nice cup holders in here and some nice storage behind there. You got a type, C, you got a type A and a type C USB charger. And then you have a 150 volt outlet here in the back. And then also you have the controls for air conditioning and stuff for the backseat passengers and I think overall like you know pretty decent headroom the seats are back here pretty comfortable the headrests go up and down pretty nice and then you got your armrest here in the middle but I think the backseat of this GMC Cadia matches matches the comfort of the front where you're not gonna have any have any problems with you know fitting back here if even as an adult so you know again I'm Chevy does like GM has been doing a great job with those on their SUVs and crossovers as of lately Welcome to the driving portion of the 2020 GMC Acadia. So the first thing you do when you get on the road is you got to give it a little bit of gas, but there's people walking in front of me, so we gotta get ahead a little bit. So, one thing to notice when you first hop into the 2020 GMC Acadia, when you hop out on the road, is how smooth it is. It is, this car is so smooth. I can't believe how smooth this thing drives. I think this is definitely one of the smoothest driving SUV crossovers. Um, that I have driven in a long time like the last time that a car drove this smooth was like it was a Cadillac XT5 and that thing was nearly $60,000 and it makes sense because it's on the same exact platform as this so it's kind of nice that they've they've kind of that technology and that amount of comfort and that luxury has and the way and how it drives has moved its way down to to this lower model of vehicle yes this isn't, this isn't a low model vehicle but it's lower than the Cadillac of course but it drives so smooth and it's absolutely comfortable to drive. One thing that I like about it, it is not as big as the Traverse. So the 20, I reviewed the 2020 Traverse a couple weeks ago and you definitely will see that vehicle, that video out before you see this one. And that was my only, kind of looking back, that was my only thing about that vehicle versus this one, is that one was a little big. Like it felt kind of big on the road. So I think this GMC Acadia just feels like it drives a little bit it's a little bit easier to drive just because it's smaller. So when, and also it weighs less than the than the than the Traverse. So when you put your foot down, it gets moving a lot faster at the speed. So that's always a plus when driving anything like this. Because when SUVs this size aren't really known for having a having a whole lot of power, but it's always nice to drive one that has some power. So that's that's pretty good. The steering is like your typical family crossover steering, and kind of the and the suspension is like your typical family crossover suspension. It kind of rides like a sedan, and it drive and it steers and handles like a sedan. It's just a crossover, and that's why it's called a crossover because it's a crossover of an SUV. It's a crossover with it's it's a cross between an SUV and the car, and this one more drives like the car side of things. So this car has the 9 speed automatic transmission. That thing it shifts so smooth you don't really notice it. And like at you know at highway speeds at 70 miles an hour you're between 1500 at at highway speeds you're in between 1500 RPM and 2000 RPM. What's kind of helps you get some pretty decent gas mileage. One thing I didn't notice is I don't think this one has the cylinder deactivation or the cylinder deactivation is not really working yet. Because I mean this car does only have 300 miles. 
So, you know, maybe not everything is on and working yet, but I didn't really notice any cylinder deactivation. But when you're at highway speeds, and even at city speeds, there's not a whole lot of road noise. You get some tire noise, but that's really it. Like, you don't really hear the engine unless you're really stepping on it. And just for everyday driving, you only hear this here noise now because it's raining here, because it's Oregon in September. So, you know, it rains. But road noise is to a minimum. And it's just a quality driving vehicle. So how does this drive compare to a lot of competitors? So the 2020, I haven't driven the 2020 Explorer yet, but I'm really excited to drive that very soon. But I'm gonna kind of talk about some crosses I've driven recently. So like last year I drove like the Atlas and I've driven the Explorer, the Ford Edge and cars like that. And this is kind of, and this car is just as quiet and rides just like one of those SUVs does, where it's just basically, you don't really hear much in the road in terms of road noise or anything like that and suspension is really comfortable it's not stiff it's not too soft it makes it it's like a man it's like a man the, the handling is really man manageable so it drives and handles just like a car which is always nice what are some things i don't like about it so one of the th one of the big things i don't like about it is the shit the, the, the button shifters i talked about that when i did the walk around in, of the interior but i really just do not like those it's just so confusing with with all these different like buttons and switches doing different going different directions it's really confusing so when you put it in park you have to push the park button and then you've got to turn the vehicle off and i feel like that's kind of it's kind of confusing because there's sometimes when you can feel like you thought you turned it off or you thought you put it in park and you did and yet you did something else that wasn't one of those things so i think that maybe that wasn't the best idea but i understand why it was done but i just really don't like it another thing that i don't like about it is the simple fact that you know at this price point at you know at 40 40 plus thousand dollars the only safety feature it has is parking sensors and blind spot monitoring. There should be some type of adaptive cruise control or at least a front engine, front front end collision assist or something like that at, at, at this price point of vehicle. So I just really think that, um, I really just think that they should add a little bit more stuff standard on this trim level of GMC Acadia. Yes, I know they have a lot of stuff standard on it, like now, but I think there should be a couple more things on it. But besides those really small, Besides those really small things, the, G, the 2020 GMC Acadia is a really nice vehicle. It drives nice, it handles nice, and I think it looks nice. And it actually, it's a pretty reasonable price considering this is a mid-range model it, and it doesn't have all the options. So I think that it's not that bad at all. And it's just so comfortable to drive, it's so smooth. So the 2020 GMC Acadia is a great SUV. It does everything well, it, and, it's, and the updates were definitely worth it. It's definitely something that they needed to do on this vehicle to kind of bring, to make it even more competitive with the rest of the market. So I definitely think that this is a great SUV to look at if you're looking for a family SUV, but you don't really need something as big as like the Traverse or like the Explorer, something like that. This is like a great in-between size between kind of getting something smaller and something bigger. So if you liked this video, hit me with a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, keep riding me. Thanks for watching.